Greetings, this is Mr. Garwood with our continuing video series on calculus, second edition. I am trying to get so you can see the problem I'm going to be working on. Um, and this set calculus, second edition, breaks Cochrane and Gillette. I'm sure you've heard that before. And um, today we're going to be continuing our examples on uh, related rates. So our problem today is that I am watching a hot air balloon rise. And like I am terrible about doing, I am trying to figure out how... Do I um, figure out how fast this balloon is rising? Now, so I'm, I'm 200 feet away from, or 200 meters, excuse me, from the launch site. The balloon rises vertically at a constant rate of four meters per second. How fast is the angle of elevation of the balloon increasing 30 seconds after the launch? So this is example four on page um, 181 of, of the physical text. Now, I'm probably gonna do this a little bit differently than, um, your book and that's okay. So here I am hanging out. I actually got to zoom back out and get all this squared away. I had to move everything. I apologize. So zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. There I am. All right. So let's see. Can I zoom out just a little bit more? It's always fun trying to get the camera to do exactly what I want it to do, which it never wants to do. Now I am 200 meters away. The balloon is rising. And my question is, for this angle, what is the change in the angle with respect to time? We're going to label this side Y, and the balloon is rising, which means that dy dt equals 4 meters per second. And it is, is giving me that time is 30. All right, well, let's, let's figure out what we know. Well, after 30 seconds, so Y, now Y at zero is zero. That's what's on the ground. So I know that, which means that Y equals four meters per second times 30 seconds plus zero, which means the balloon is 120 meters in the air. So Y equals, for our, for our thing here, um, this tells me that that is going on. Now, how do I relate this to this? Huh. Let me think. How do I relate this, the Y to this? Oh, wait. The tangent of theta is the opposite side over the adjacent side. And we know that that's 200. And if this was pre-calc, I would just say, what's the angle? Well, the angle is the inverse tangent of 120 over 200. It's not what it asked me. I've got to differentiate with respect to time on both sides. So I'm going to do a d dt tangent theta equals d dt y over 200. Okay, now um, the derivative of tangent is secant squared and I've got a chain rule this so that gives me d theta dt. Now um, derivative, uh, pull out the 1 over 200 that's a constant. dy, d, derivative of time with respect to y is just dy dt. Now, um, well, heck, Mr. Garwood, how do I figure that out? Well, number one, I need theta. I didn't think so. So I've got theta equals the inverse tangent of 120 over 200. So I'm pulling out my handy dandy calculator. The inverse, tan inverse tangent, 120 divided by 200. Am I in the right mode? Mode, yep, I'm in radians. Radians make everything better. So theta is, we'll go to four decimal places, 0 0.5404 radians. Okay, now, 
d theta dt is 1 over, 20, 1 over 200 times dy dt. dy dt is 4, so I've got 1 over 200 times... Ms. Cloud, please see Dr. Kennedy before you leave for the afternoon. Ms. Cloud, please see Dr. Kennedy before you leave for the afternoon. Uh, Not a rush, just before you leave. Thank you. I again apologize. This is the joys of trying to record a video while people are still in the, the school building. And I've got to figure out secant th squared theta. So this is this one's fun. Let's see. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So I'm going to say 1. Let's go whoop, alpha y equals. And delete that. So I've got 1 over cosine of the answer. That wonderful answer. Second insert. boop ba doop ba doo squared is 34 over 25. All right. Yeah, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. So I've got 34 over 25 times d theta dt equals 1 over 200. Zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. 1 over 200 times 4. Now, um, 4 over 200 simplifies to 1 over 50, so I've got um, 34 over 25 times d theta dt equals 1 over 50. This is 200 meters. So this is this has units per second, and really this has this is going to have um, units radians per second. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal. So 25 over 34 on both sides, 25 over 34. So d theta dt equals 25 over 34 times 1 over 50 radians per second. Well, we can do a little simplification here. I've got... Um, this cancels leaving a 2, so I should get d theta dt equals 1 over 68 radians per second. Okay, and so let's figure out what that is. 1 divided by 68. About 0 0.015, so I would call that d theta dt is 0. Point, and I really hope you can see all of this. I need to slide this up. Um, 0 0.0147 radians per second. Super impressed with myself. So okay, this is just doing some algebra, getting everything over there. 1 over 68 radians per second. And I'm really excited about this because I'm about to... To show you, the textbook says, oh, look at that, look at that, 0 0.015 radians per second. They rounded to three, I rounded to four. I know it sounds silly, your professor's really excited that he did this. These, these problems are horrible about making some silly error, and I did this on the first video attempt. You'll never believe me, because you know that I could video this as much as I want to, but I legitimately did this on first attempt. Um, I have found this video extraordinarily entertaining. I hope you have as well. And uh, I hope that you continue to find value in my random ramblings about calculus. Good luck as our semester continues.